Hello, in this lecture, we're gonna talk about the React developer tools. So this is a Chrome extension that you could download and then have access to look at your React elements, similar to the Elements tab, except you'll actually see the React named elements in the panel. And that's basically what the main thing this extension does, and we're gonna show you how to use it and install it. So you're gonna to go to React Developer Tools on the Google Chrome web store where you can just find it and install it to your Chrome browser. If you wanna install it for another browser, you can search for it on GitHub and then it'll give you instructions on how to install it for your browser. So if you go on this page, this is just gonna give you a screenshot here and a brief overview. There's not really an in-depth guide over here, but you can search for different guides online to find out how to use it, but I'll show you it. There's not that many features in this. So compared to the regular JavaScript debugger, this is pretty trivial and I would say not really that necessary. So you can get by without using this, but I think some of the features in here are really cool and I'm going to start using a lot more of these. So if we go here, we have code sandbox. So this is a place where you can actually test this out just because you may be using a React app that doesn't support it yet. So if you go here, you can see we have an app, just a regular React app rendering some components here. And then I have copied the link here and pa pasted that into a browser where I can see my app. So Code Sandbox gives you that. So if you go here and you just say, hello, Sandbox, how are you? And then you save this, you hit Control S, and then you refresh your app, you'll see your changes on your actual hosted app here. So this is cool. So now we're gonna right click and inspect to get this WebKit inspector up if you don't have that already. And what you're gonna notice here is that you can now basically see the actual elements that we have in our app. So we have an element called hello world, we have an element called other component, and cool things about this are that this is the the react tree right you're only seeing the react elements which is useful if you want to see where the react elements are in your app so clicking on these you get a special panel over here where you can do special things for react specific stuff so if you go up here next to that react component you can suspend the selected component you can inspect the matching dom element so if i click on this it's going to bring me to the regular elements panel here where you can see that exact element here, which you could see is just a div, right? So regular HTML here, React components over here. So this is the end resulting HTML. So go back over here. Another thing I can do is I can actually, I can log this component to the console here where you could see more data about that. So I don't really do that ever. One thing that I think is really useful is you could see the source for that element. So if I click on this, it's gonna actually take me to exactly where that component is defined. So I define that component here in app.js. If I go over here to the components tab and I look at this other component, which is in a different file, I can click on this view source and it's gonna take me to that file. And you can see here now I'm in the sources panel, right? So here is where I have that other file. So I knew exactly, so if you're, if you wanna debug a React app and see where the files are for those components, there's, there's less efficient ways of doing that where you're putting breakpoints in those files or you're, you're searching for the names of those files in here like this. So I could also just do this and type other file and find it like that. But if you wanna try something quicker, you might wanna try this. Next thing going down here, we have props. So here in Hello World, I don't have any props hooked up, but in other component, if you go, if I go over here and show you the other component source code, I have basically some props here, a default prop that says component name fill, which is a default prop here but let's see if we can modify that prop. So if I go back to the WebKit inspector, I can actually then change this prop here and I could actually say title and I could just say Joe and I save that. Oop. Okay, so there's a bit of a lag. So then there's that title there. And so now you can see we have that component with the name Joe. So that React Dev tools here, components tab is actually able to change the React props for you on any specific component, which is really cool. So you could try different props out where you could see what props they're actually rendered with, which is really useful as well. So we can copy that to the clipboard here using this. And then I think we could paste those in here as a JSON expression. So that's cool. And then over here, we can copy the source of that as well. So if we copy that React source component there, we can 
go over here and we could paste that in and then that's the source of that app so you could maybe paste that into your file explorer to get to that file quicker so that's cool and so this also you could go up here and you could click you could just search for these components so if i want to search for other component it'll highlight that for me and then also up here you can then you can uh, you can then use the regular inspector here, just like the regular elements tab. You can do this and you could see this component over here. So I have another button in here. Now this is not a react component. So this, let's just actually make that. So I added this button in here over uh, right here. So we can make this a button, which we can call function or button. So let's just call it button. So we do that and we go up here and we just create this and we return this button. Now what this button is gonna do, it's just going to set a style when you click on it. And the reason I'm doing this is so that we could enable the React profiler to see what's going on with that. So here we go, we have this. So now we're just debugging, more debugging. So we have this thing is not defined. So I have this, I have a hook. So we'll just move that hook up here. So I have a hook that using use state, I'm just setting the color of that. So as I click on this, it changes the color because I'm setting the state to be something and then I'm inverting that. So if it's true, it's then false and then false if it's true, if it's undefined, it then becomes true. So then if it's true, it, it's blue text and if not, it's green. So why did I do that? So I did that so that I could save this. So hit control S and then you're gonna jump on over to your link. You're gonna refresh. And now we see our React component. So you go. So if you're not seeing all your React components, maybe they're just regular HTML components and you didn't know that. And I have that React component there. Now, another thing you'll notice is really cool. You have that hook here. So you could actually see the hook defined there. And as I click on the button, it's now changing the state. So you could see here that state of that hook is true or false. So isn't that cool? Really awesome, right? So now you could debug state in addition to props. So that's, that's all I'm going to share with components tab right now. You can, you could play with this. You could do previous searches and you can go up here and you could also do the light theme. So you could change some settings up here. You could change it to a light theme if you want. We're going to do dark theme. So let's go to the second extension that was installed, the profiler. So what this is going to do is the same thing to the net, network profiler or performance profiler that we looked at. If you write, if you click on this and you click start profiling and then you refresh the page, that does nothing, right? Because what, what this is doing is only recording React activity. So if you record this and then you just click on this button a couple times and then we go here and we undo that recording, now you could see we have a timeline. So not much of a timeline, but we have something here. So we could see different states, I think that were rendered here. And then as we're, we could step through and see different times of those renders or different, yeah, so different time intervals for those renders. Now let's go to the interactions tab. Let's see if we can see that here as well. We're gonna click on record again, click on a couple things. And it's gonna say no interactions were recorded. So if we go here and we look at the API, you can see interaction tracing. And so what you need to do is you actually need to wrap your app in this special profiler. So you're gonna need to actually wrap your app in this specific component. So if you're interested in trying this out, feel free to do that. We're gonna stop here though, because again, I don't do a whole lot of performance testing these days. So this is something if you're a power user and you really want to get a full detailed information on what's exactly happening with your React components, I think we might do another video on this. So that's it for now. I just wanted to give you a little intro on what this is in case this was useful for you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn even more about debugging React apps, check out the link in the description to get the full course. Thanks.